Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, a little while back, I did a video on relocating um, the battery and hydraulic pump for my ramps on my trailer. And I had somebody ask me to make a video on how I made those hydraulic ramps back there. So today we're just gonna make a real quick video on how I made the ramps, what I used. I'll, I'll, I'll put, I guess, links in the description below of the parts that I used. And I'll just kind of describe to you how I built these ramps. And maybe we'll get the uh, truck hooked up to the trailer here. Get it pulled away from that pile so that I can make them go up and down. But uh, let's do that right now. Let's get the truck hooked up get it pulled forward a little bit. It is a beautiful day in Ohio today. It's about 55 degrees. For us Ohioans, that's beautiful. Sun shining. We don't get that a lot up here. Sun shining and it's nice and warm. All right, so I got the truck pulled forward enough so we can drop these ramps down. Uh, I guess first of all, we should talk about what this trailer is. It's a Belashi. Uh, and I'll have to look at the title. I believe it's like a 1990. It might be newer, but I'll have to I'll have to look at the title and I'll put that up the year on the screen here. But uh, it is an electric brake trailer. Now all the electric brakes work. I know this because I, I'll I've pulled this trailer around here in the gravel and hit the trailer brake inside the truck, and all four tires have locked up, so they are working. I haven't had them apart. Uh, I just bought this trailer and uh, built these ramps and I put this thing to work. Um, when I bought this trailer, I don't know if I have pictures, but if I don't, I'll insert a picture of what this used to look like back here. Uh, the back of this had a lot more pitch on it and it had a really small ramp. Let me show you what the ramps used to look like. They're over here. Had these little flip up ramps now i put the wood in these ramps to see if i could use these ramps but uh i wasn't able to use these ramps there was no way the paver would not i think i might have actually got the paver the paver up those ramps one time because i had a job at the end of last year that i had to i had to get the trailer to or the paver to so i think i did make them work but uh it was just way too much pitch. That paver don't like to climb a lot of pitch. And it has metal track, so. Anyways, this trailer had a, a really big pitch on the back of it. So I ended up cutting the trailer here and taking a lot of that pitch out of it. And across the back here were pieces of angle iron and it was open. I guess so bigger track machines, like excavators, when you're loading them up, it would knock the dirt off the tracks before you got it up there on the trailer. That's the way it was designed. 
so I took a lot of pitch out of this dovetail. I took the angle iron out and I inserted the wood, installed the wood. And then the the ramps, I brought my tape measure out so we could uh, have a look at exactly what size material I used. A lot of this wood, like this was the angle, or wood, steel. This was the angle iron that was in this back dovetail. I just cut it out and I welded it back in here. And then we use some channel, some five inch channel. And it is about, the ramps are about, yeah. actually we'll get it down, we'll get them down. And I used a little chain here to hold the ramps up and it's worked, it's worked pretty good. The only problem I had is, is this metal that I used. It was about eighth inch thick. I probably should have used a little thicker. I ended up having to go back and weld a little plate in there to make it a little stronger. On the way back from a job, this had bent and I let the chain pop out and the ramp fell down. But the, so far, this has worked pretty good, this whole chain system. One thing I like about it is some of the other systems where they have like a solid bar that goes up to here, that bar always gets bent, always. Every trailer I've ever had that's got bent. These chains, they don't get bent and they work pretty good. Let's, see, let's, let, this down. let's let these ramps down. Usually just uh, that uh, the hydraulic pump I have on here, it just lets the fluid flow back into the reservoir. So most of the time I don't even have to hit down. They just go down. It's stubborn. Being stubborn today. Man, I normally don't have that much trouble getting them chains out. So these ramps are about, let's see, total length. Now they're about 91 and a half inches. Just over seven feet, well, seven and a half feet. They were, and you can see down here where I cut and welded an extension onto them. They were about 80 inches. And there was just too much pitch in the beginning here. And the roller didn't like to hit it. Neither did the paver. So I added that little extension on it. So that's the total length. Now the width on these. The width is good because on this roller, my older roller, I can split these two ramps with the roller and it goes up just fine. And my smaller roller that I take to my paving jobs will go up just this ramp here. And they're about three feet wide. Now, if you watch the one video where I relocated the pump and the battery, you'll know that they're up here under the side. They used to be in a toolbox on the front, and I used to always hit that toolbox. And one of those days, one of these days, I was going to knock that toolbox off, and it was going to shear the hydraulic line. But I got my pump up under here. I will include this in the description box below where I got this. Um, and the mistake I made, I got this off eBay, it was fairly cheap, is I got a two-way pump and you only need a one-way pump. You only need the hydraulic pump to push the ramps up and just uh, release to let the ramps down. You don't need hydraulic pressure both ways. So this, was, this pump was hydraulic pressure both ways and I had to do some rewiring in this in the switch to make it work, which I was able to do. So I've hydraulic pressure up. And usually the ramps like I showed you earlier will just go down on their own, but sometimes I have to hit down and it just, it just releases the relay now to let the fluid go back into the reservoir. 
So I was able to make that work, but don't make that mistake. Don't buy the two-way pump. Just get the single pump. And you can see where uh, I got a hydraulic line. Now I got these lines from Tractor Supply and Family Farm and Home. And they just go into half inch pipe, half inch black pipe. Now I thought I was gonna, like I didn't think that this would work, these fittings, these hydraulic fittings straight into black pipe, but they did. I just use Teflon tape on there and it doesn't leak at all. It takes the hydraulic pressure and it doesn't leak at all. So I have it coming out of the pump, this hydraulic line into this half inch pipe, black pipe. And I have that black pipe run all the way to the back of the trailer here. So let's talk about the back of the trailer. I think this is where everybody wants to know. Or we'll see what I did. Now these are the hinges. I just went ahead and made these hinges. I went to, we have a local scrapyard that lets us go in and buy stuff out of the scrapyard. And I just cut some plates uh, and welded these in. I couldn't find any kind of a decent hinge online. I searched everywhere. Everything that I found was like really thin, cheap metal, and I didn't think it would make it. It would, uh, it would take all of the stress of the weight of this ramp and the hydraulic pressure. So I just built these myself. And I think you can see how I did that. And welded it right into the back of the trailer here. I got these little pins in here, but I don't ever have to take these pins out. I haven't had a problem with these ramps yet. Let me put the ramps up so you can see the hydraulic lines and everything run back here with the cylinders. Now these hydraulic cylinders, I think I found on Amazon, they're just a two inch cylinder with a 16 inch stroke, inch and a quarter rod, laminar rod. Um, you can probably see that rotate your, pause it, write it down. Uh, and one thing I'm glad I'm making this video today because you got your hydraulic run, line running in the bottom of these, the weight of the ramp runs the ram back down and pushes the fluid back into the reservoir on the pump but i need some kind of filter for here and i forgot that i was going to order something and i haven't but down here i just got some plate welded in let me grab a tape measure this is sm smaller channel it is what about two and a half oh it's about four four inch channel and I have this welded into the bottom of the trailer down here. And you can see where I have that pipe running back, that half inch pipe and hydraulic line just running into it there. And I crossed it over to here. So one line running back with two lines running off of it. And you see when I put the ramps up, it just pushes one ramp up first and then the other ramp, they don't go up together, which I don't really care. Pushes one up and then pushes the other ramp up. So we got these lines off of, uh, or from uh, Family Farm and Home. I believe that's where I got these from. I get most of my stuff from Family Farm and Home. I used to like Tractor Supply until Family Farm and Home came around. Now they're my new favorite. Here's another view of these hinges that I built from down below. So we just got this channel running off from underneath the trailer and I got the hydraulic cylinder mounted in there. I added some plate to it for thickness. And uh, that's how I got it mounted up top. Another piece of channel. And uh, all this stuff I cut it out, of, I cut out of this plate with torches. I don't have, I do have a plasma cutter, but it won't cut through anything that's 
this thick and I actually rarely use that plasma cutter. I pretty much get everything done with a torch. But that's it. That is basically how I built. It took me like a week to build these. You know, I've never built anything like this before, so I had no clue I had how to build these. I had built some ramps before. I had a trailer before this trailer, my very first trailer, and I had used, and I'll put some pictures of those, I'll insert those right now, of, uh, I used some springs, some trailer ramp springs that I had found on eBay. And they worked all right, I had, but I ended up having to have four springs across the back of it. And I'm gonna tell you, there was so much pressure on them springs. Uh, it would rip the ramps, the trailer ramps apart. It would rip them off of, it would rip them off the trailer. It was a terrible setup. It worked for like one year. And uh, I ended up selling that trailer because it had two single axles on it. It couldn't, it couldn't carry any weight. What's nice about this trailer is I can put my paver on it. I can put my skid steer with my small roller in the bucket of my skid steer and I can take all three to a job just with this trailer. So it's one thing that I love about this trailer. All right, so yeah, there's the hydraulic ramps on my trailer. Uh, I'll put I'll put a link to these cylinders in the description box below. The battery I just used, a marine battery, and I'll put a link for the right, for the correct hydraulic. I, I'll put one to the one that I used if you guys want to use that. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I would use the right one. You only need one hydraulic pressure up, and that's it. I'll put that in the description box below too. So yeah, that's it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And please like, I just started this channel and uh, I'm trying to get it, trying to get the subscriptions up, trying to get to monetization. Um, thanks for watching.